Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, it's time to continue the Bash series. In this video, this is going to be a shorter one. It's really just about arguments. Now in general, I've already mentioned before that I think Bash is suited best to light task automation. So you probably don't want to get too fancy with this stuff. I generally, I mean, you can do more complicated things with Bash. But in general, when I find myself doing complex things with arguments like passing in key value lists and doing a lot of validation, a lot of the time it's better to be using like a, a I don't want to say this, but a quote unquote real programming language that has libraries for dealing with that sort of thing. It just makes it a lot less error prone, especially when you get to more security critical things like dealing with backups and error handling for kind of important things, maybe passing in an argument could let you do something bad. So I'm just going to cover arguments sort of in a very simple and quick way here. So bash arguments, um, there's a couple shortcuts for which I've, I've just sort of referenced them up, up top here. When a bash program is started, the file name of the program that's currently running is in the zero variable. So if you remember how to set variables, we'll do this here. Um, we can just say our file name equals, remember no spaces around that equals sign in bash, equals the name of our script. It'll be a string. Uh, you can quote this if you want. Now we can just echo our, come on, file name and auto completion. This is one of the reasons it's nice to use a real editor like Vim, Emacs, Sublime Text, uh, or anything that gives you syntax highlighting, auto-completion, that sort of thing. And we're just going to run this quickly. Um, actually, we, we will have to, well, I'll show you what happens when we um, run it. We'll try to run, uh, look, auto-complete and Z-shell isn't working. That's strange. So, um, whoops. My bad. Permission denied. There we go. So what we really want is execute permission on this. So remember to do that. And then you'll be able to run it without a problem. Arguments. So Z shell will see this as a an executable file. So what's happened here is we've run it. And it's given us back a single line of output on standard out, which is in our shell. And that is the file name that this was called with. If we, for example, change the file name, we'll rename this to, I'll just add a two at the end. How about, how about a couple twos? Cause I'm, I'm lazy. All right. So you'll see it's still here at the beginning. It still has the execute bit set and we can just run it again and we will now get the updated file name. So whatever file name this was called with, uh, it will give you in this variable here, the dollar sign zero. Well, it's the zero variable. Any arguments you pass to the script, let's name it back. Any arguments you pass are in set and further variables. So you can get the number of arguments by using the hash variable. And then your actual arguments, which I'll show you in a second, are simply in the one to essentially infinity variables. So the numbered variables are your arguments. So if we Quickly, just want to see, uh, let's say, you know, I'll move this to a different terminal. Yeah. Now we want to get the number of arguments. So we'll simply say number of arguments equals, and that's this number variable here. And then what were they? We'll just say uh, we haven't covered uh, conditionals yet, like if and for. So what we'll actually do is simply list out the first three arguments. So we'll just say, the first three arguments were one, two, and three. So there you go. This gives us back now. So here's, we're calling the script. We're passing it these arguments some arbitrary number of arguments. And the first three arguments were hello, there, and yo. That said, why don't we try uh, looking up an argument that doesn't exist? How about we echo, let's say, five. Uh, 
it just gives us back a blank line, right? You see that. So in a lot of programming languages or something, you would get an exception, you would get like an index out of bounds or some kind of error where you're basically trying to point to something that doesn't exist and it crashes your whole program. Bash is a lot more forgiving for things like that, but you're gonna end up fighting because it often doesn't tell you when there's a problem or when something's missing. It just gives you a blank line or a, you know an em something empty. Uh, and then you try to do operations on that empty thing, like multiply by it or write it into a file or overwrite something with it. It can kind of get you into trouble just because a lot of programming errors are those sort of, I imagined that I had a different kind of value than I did, and now I'm gonna just do operations on it, assuming that I know what it is. Um, a lot of programming errors kind of stem from that. You have, you're visualizing the wrong thing in your head, the wrong data structure. You think you have different data than you do. And Bash is very good at hiding that from you. And then you sort of have to go through a lot of things to figure out why things are behaving weird. Uh, it can be kind of time consuming. I mean, that's true of any, of all the more forgiving languages, typically like dynamically typed languages. So things like Python and Ruby also have those kinds of things because they're very, I would say, forgiving about what they allow you to do, like multiplying by a string, which sort of doesn't make sense, but it kind of does. You know, if you multiply the string one five times, in some languages, that'll just be the string one, 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 one. I think that's five ones. I lost track when I was saying it. Anyway, so that's pretty much the long and the short of it. That's really all you're going to need to know for arguments for what we have planned with Bash. As a system administrator, really, again, other than taking arguments, there's not too much you're going to do to get fancy with this. And if you are, I would suggest that Bash may be the wrong way uh, to implement whatever you're doing. So just remember these things. Dollar sign zero, so the zero variable is the file name that's you know being run. The number of arguments can be found in the uh, hash sign, the pound variable. And after that, simply numbered variables are starting at one. It's not zero indexed um, like many programming languages. Um, one, two, three, ad infinitum to n would be the arguments that are actually passed in when you run the script. So that's pretty much all there is to say for our purposes here. Um, for more, there's obviously like Linux documentation project, many books have been written about Bash, um, you can check there. Also, Man Bash, uh, I've mentioned it before, but it's a good place to start just to get an overview of things. So that's it, if this has been helpful, uh, remember to upload, subscribe for more, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.